December 2019. I'm I spent that whole month in jail. Merry Christmas and New Year's. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I did work the kitchen, so I was able to get like the Christmas ham and you know stuff like that, and I would give gravy to you know the other guys and stuff like that. One of the uh, officers in there pulled me to the side, like it's one of my like my first couple days in there. Mr. Taylor, can you come to the side? I'm like, what the fuck? I just got here. How am I in trouble? I don't even understand this. Yeah. I get to the side. It's like, hey, you remember me? We started comedy together. What? I'm like, man, get the fuck out of here, man. I ain't trying to hear that. I'm in jail. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Isaac Abrams Show. I'm your host, Isaac Abrams. Today's very special guest, comedian, writer, actor, and philanthropist, the very funny Ron Taylor. Welcome to the show, Ron. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for having me. Never heard philanthropist. Uh, that's common. I, I give that one to everybody because I <laughs> feel like it's uh, generous of you to donate your time. So Hey, there it is. Uh, how you doing, Ron? Man, I'm chilling like a villain, dog. Well, actually, I take that back. It's very hot. It so is. I'm what, not really chilling. About 105 today, you'd say? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I drive a big van and my uh, uh, AC doesn't work. That was the air conditioning falling out of the ceiling right there. That's Did, funny. Didn't I just put it up this morning? So <laughs> didn't mean to scare you. The place is falling apart. That's, That's why we're all moving right. It. That's all right. That's AC talking to me because I don't have it in my van. Yeah. And uh, and my driver's side window doesn't roll down. Wow. Yeah. So, so it's, it's just co- miserable. Compounded heat. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, I'm alive. I'm able to drive, and that's what's important. That's a good outlook on it. Oh yeah. Uh, you is this the same van that you did your van cooked meals in? Yeah, yeah. That was uh, many moons ago when everything was working, and uh, uh, or at least more things were working. That was a uh, it was a pretty fun thing to do. It was difficult to do, but that was all I had to do. Yeah, and uh, you know, people ask me now, like, man, why don't you bring that back? And it's like, cause it's hard. And I never <laughs> get paid for it. Yeah, and I've got other things to do. And of course, if I would have stuck with it, I could have been a fucking millionaire. For all I know by now. Yeah, but you know, such is life. Van chef. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which you know, it was just like I was living in there. I gotta eat. It's not like I'm a chef. It's like, how else you gonna eat? I'm not about right. to be buying takeout every day. I, I I don't have any money. I just moved here. I don't have a job. I have nothing. Yeah, yeah. You cooked up some fancy things, some lobster tails and asparagus. Yeah, man. Well, you know, I tell people, and even when I was doing that show, I was trying to express to people that, like, you know, the things that we think of as expensive are only expensive because we go to restaurants to get them. Yeah. Like a lobster tail at Ralph's, which is not the best lobster tail in the world, <laughs> but a lobster tail at Ralph's is is at the time, it was five bucks. Really? Four ninety nine. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I've seen people go to Chick fil A and, and McDonald's and spend, you know, ten, twenty, thirty dollars. It's like, man, you can spend you spend twenty dollars at Ralph's, you eat like a king, man. That's right. Yeah. I've seen people during the pandemic that were ordering McDonald's to the house. And that was like thirty five dollars for like a seven dollar combo. By the time you pay all the delivery fees, yeah. My buddy Trey Stewart, he's a comedian uh, from Detroit as well. I saw him do that, and boy, I would not let him live that down. I'm like, wait a minute, you, you ordered McDonald's? <laughs> that's like ordering something from the dollar store. Like it's that's if yeah. you're gonna take the time to order it and spend twenty dollars just to have it sent to you, you might as well get get Wendy's at least. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't order. McDonald's, but you know. Yeah, Wendy's is definitely the uh, the premium of the top three burger joints. Which I don't really know why, you know, because I'm I'm not very big on fast food, but I do know like when it's late night, you know, I'm done with a show or whatever. I'm like, no, nah, let me just get something real quick. And I try to go to Wendy's. The line is wrapped around the fucking building. It's like, yeah. is Wendy's good like that? Like, yeah. I never know because I never go there. Right. The only line that's longer than Wendy's, and this is a Southern California thing, is in and out right which is ironic yeah. <laughs> but i used to think that they hired people like half the line is just people that work there to make it look like the line is always long i believe it i believe it i know you uh pink's hot dogs oh yeah on melrose in hollywood i've because i'm staying in that area now and i've seen them slowly make hot dogs to build the lineup yeah it was the first and last time i went there like i saw this guy he had my dog in his hand and i'm like all right i see the chili mm-hmm. i see the spoon Put it on there. He just sat there. He waited Slowly. for a good, a good 30 seconds. Yeah. might have been a minute. I'm like, 
I see. This is why you guys have a li- You only serve hot dogs. Right. Y'all shouldn't have a line this fucking long. <laughs> no, shouldn't have a line at all. They probably hire those guys at Hollywood and Highland that make the statues. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just sitting there chilling. But that's yeah. been a staple in L.A. for a long time. You know that you're going to go burn an hour and a half when you go to Pink's. Not me. That's for tourists. They should have another one around back for locals only. Right, right, right. No line. Well, you know, I think you get a very fine hot dog at 7-Eleven. You know, so. They're not bad. I th- it's a it's a meat stick, man. Yeah, I've you know? some of my favorite taquitos from a 7-Eleven. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever make uh, Frito nachos like in the bag with the cheese and the chili? No, no, but I... I have been and I still am pretty big on 7-Eleven. I do get the nacho, or at least I used to. I kind of changed my diet up recently. But uh, I would get the nachos, right? And a lot of people would open the nacho bag, pour the nachos in the little container, and then put chili and cheese on them. Mm-hmm. Wrong. Now, I really don't know how comfortable I feel about saying this on the internet ways. Okay. But what you do is you take the bag out. Mm-hmm. And you fill the tray up. Oh shit! With chili and cheese. That's a life hack right there. Yeah, and then you put. So I only do chili, cheese, jalapenos on top of the cheese. Yeah. And then you keep the bag, and then you take the chips out the bag, and you dip that shit. Yeah. And then that now you got more. I'm not about to. You know, I ain't trying to. I like each chip to be evenly distributed. Yeah. With chili, cheese, and a single jalapeno. Right. You can you can only do that if you dip in. You can't get all the chips if you nah, I don't mm, do that. That's so, right. Yeah, Cuz there's always the stuffs on the top layer of nachos and then you get to the bottom layer of chips and they're just dry. And you're out the store. What you going to do now? Yeah. No, I don't deal in that. I do the, I put the stuff in the bottom of the tray and I get the chicken. The uh spicy chicken wings. A lot of people give me shit for liking those wings, but those are good wings, man. Yeah. Good wings. Very good wings. Big wing fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say so. There's a bar. There's two bars in my neighborhood that serve wings. One of them serves them the flats and the wings connected. Oh, whole wings. Yeah, that's some Detroit shit. Is it? I don't. I don't know if it's Detroit shit, but I know in Detroit. I think most black slash ghetto areas have you buy we fry joints. So it's a fish and chicken place, mm-hmm. and it's you buy we fry because. If you're using EBT, which is food stamps for the uninitiated, uh, if you're using <laughs> EBT, you can buy the stuff there for you know with EBT, but you can't buy hot food with EBT. Right. You got to buy groceries. Mm-hmm. So it's like you know you buy it with the EBT, and then it's a dollar fry fee. Oh, okay. So they'll fry your chicken, or fry, fry your fish, and different stuff like that. Yeah. So whole wings come from <laughs> yeah. you buy we fry places. Okay. So that's why I'm like, oh, that's Detroit. But no, I'm sure they do that in Compton and stuff like that. And somewhere uh, down in Atlanta. Yeah. I've only seen them in Vegas. They call them whale wings. They just, I think that's just, and then people are real polarized. You've got people that are like, I do not like them all together. And then you got people that are like, I like them better together. Well, I'll tell you what, I know when they together, especially with the little part. Mm-hmm. So you got like the drum. The flat and whatever this shit is here. The bonus. Yeah, whatever yeah. that is. <laughs> when they when they fry them things whole like that, they stay hot for a long time, <laughs> man. Like yeah, they, you got to you got to bust them things open and let them breathe before you can eat them. Cause, yeah, it's just because the skin's still there it hasn't been uh, pierced. I don't know what the science is. Yeah, I'm not a scientist. All they say is the spirit. You get more of the spirit of the chicken. <laughs> you take that thing out the grease like this yeah. man it should be hot for four hours what is what would be an appropriate name for the extra part of that the little tip of the wing well nothing's appropriate in today's day that's true i got a few names yeah. in my mind that i could call this but i'm not gonna yeah, say yeah don't it. get canceled yeah i'm not gonna say i mean there's seven or eight people that watch this show out yeah, there so you know you can call it you know the, the little flippy flap little flippy flap yeah all right that part I, if I had a producer here, I'd be like, pull it up, Jamie. And like, be like, what's the flippy flap called? But I guess we'll never know. Yeah, man. But there's a lot of great food you can get if you just stop going to restaurants, man. Yeah. What's your favorite thing to cook? Seafood. Yeah? Yeah, just about any type of seafood. I like lobster. I like crab. I like. Although, I will say this. That's one food that I'm not a fan of getting from... A regular restaurant or 
a, uh, a grocery store. It's crab legs. Really? Yeah. Because you can go to a buffet, mm-hmm. and for the same price, it would. So let's say you get twenty, you get you spend twenty dollars on crab legs in the in the grocery store. Mm-hmm. You might get two, three clusters. Right. Right. Yeah, that's true. You go to an all you can eat restaurant for twenty, thirty dollars. You can have all you can eat. Yeah. So that's one one food. You just take that, the tray of crab legs and man, just bring it to your table. You, if you can't want to. beat that. No. You can't beat that. Yeah. The only way you can beat that is if you get a crab boat and, you know, go catch them yourself. Which is slightly more expensive. Yeah, a, lo- a little bit. <laughs> but you got to divide that cost of that boat over the time that you own it, right? So eventually, if you catch enough crab, it could be pennies per pound. That is true. I've thought about this. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, we've got here in California, We I think we have rock crabs. Mm-hmm. And a few uh, Dungeness crabs, uh, but you know we're 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 used to Alaskan. Uh, no, well, yeah, there's those yeah. which obviously are in Alaska, but snow crabs. I don't know mm. if there's any snow crabs close to the shores of California. I, I couldn't say either. Uh, my biggest qualm with the crab situation is when they give you the little skinny ones that are like this. Yeah, that's a lot of work for just a little bit of meat. You gotta you gotta you gotta develop a rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. When I technique. go, people are like, you know, they think I'm a professional. I'm like, no, I'm not a professional. I just eat crab. Like, yeah. you know, you, you fill them out. You can feel where to crack them. I can do it blindfolded, man. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, <laughs> I can do it with oysters. Because we used to have oyster boils all the time in North Carolina. Oyster never, boils? Yeah, we'd steam them. Steamed oysters. Really? Oh, you get them. You can get a 50 pound bag for nothing in North Carolina because they just grow everywhere. And then you get two, three 50 pound bags and then you just have the steamer going and then you put paper on the table and you just whoosh, I've and I've never seen that. Everybody has a knife. You got to shuck them. You can taste I've, the sand and the salt. Uh, I'm, I've, I've only known oysters to, you know, be on, on the half shell mm-hmm. or fried. Yeah. I've never had them steamed in the shell. Mm. I'm going to have to look into that. That's a yeah. treat. <laughs> That's a real treat. Because I just got to... Um, oysters like raw oysters because mm-hmm. my palate was not mature enough yet yeah the, the 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 consistency the idea was just gross to me but i was doing some like raw stuff just eating raw things mm-hmm. which is you know a lot of fruits and veggies but then i was like right. wait a minute i can have raw meat right and yeah. then i got me some oysters and some sushi and whatnot and it was great it was great i'm a big fan of the seafood tower at certain establishments but what I'll do is I'll take an oyster mm-hmm. and then I'll cut up a little piece of shrimp, put it on there, and then I'll take a little bit of crab meat, put it on there, Damn. and I'll build out an experience. Oh, wow. you like an architect. Yeah. That's crazy. I never thought to do that. I know, people think I'm nuts. For as, for as much as I enjoy seafood, I, I can count on one hand how many times I've got the seafood tower because it's just so expensive they're ridiculous yeah, yeah. it's got to be on somebody else's dime it's got to for me it's got to be you know somebody else is paying for it cause. yeah i went to denver and had one and uh when i i was doing a club somewhere and normally i dress like a hobo much like now and i'm going into these nice establishments dressed like this and I'm like, oh my god what does this guy want and i'm like i'll take the most expensive thing in here, please. Yes. And then all the people, they'd be white, typically. Yeah. They come in there and ask, like, oh, my God, how is it? I'm like, it's great, you know. It's wonderful. They're it's like, exceeding <laughs> my expectations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good times. I love going somewhere. I wear this every day. I wear a black shirt and black jeans. Everywhere mm-hmm. I go, no matter what the function, this is what I wear. And yeah. it, some people just get thrown off. They're like, mm, what are you doing here? And I'm like, <laughs> you're about to find out. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that white people had that issue. If you're clean cut, you know, you don't stink and you're dressed down. It's like, hey, that's how fucking Mark Zuckerberg dresses. That's right. That's where I got the idea. He wears the same thing every day. There it is. Good enough for Zuck. It's good enough for me. There it is. I didn't even realize that just this tag here said oyster on it. It does. Wow. Bob's, I, your, Bob's your oyster. I promise you that. I, was, <laughs> I had not seen that. I just went right into seafood all by myself. It's like the end of um, Usual Suspects. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen that movie? Unusual Suspects? The, the Usual Suspects. Oh, it's no, from the 90s. No, I haven't seen that one. Basically, the long and short of it is there's a guy being interrogated, mm-hmm. and he makes up this whole line of bullshit, but he's looking behind the cop, and he just makes up a story about everything that's on the billboard behind him. That's funny. And uh, then he ends up walking free, and they, the cop figures out it's him that did the, all the crimes and shit. That's funny. That's a smart So I thought guy. you were just riffing off the room. No, no. I straight up, that's just what I have, man. That's yeah. just how I eat. I'm going to do that. I'm going to get something today now that we're talking about it. Yeah, there you go. Is there something that you just absolutely won't eat? 
like milk yeah are, uh, are we I, lactose I no i just i don't drink milk and uh, you know i've never really even had it i'm looking for chapstick right now excuse me That's there it is i've never really even had it but like cereal i would always eat it dry Really? Yeah, like my friends did be like, what the fuck, you eating cereal dry? I'm like, yeah, that's how it come. Why are y'all <laughs> dousing this shit in liquid? So yeah. I don't drink milk. I've never really had pudding or what's the other one? Yogurt. Yo oh, I stay away from yogurt unless it's in a smoothie. No, fuck that. I don't put no milk in my smoothie. What else? That's about it. I hate white condiments. I used to be there but mayonnaise is just some good stuff, man. Yeah. And then when I found out what mayonnaise is, I was like, oh, of course. It's chicken period spread. Okay. Yeah. I've never heard that before. That's what it is. Yeah. Mayonnaise is oil mm. and eggs. Eggs is just <laughs> chicken periods. Yeah. It's chicken period spread. <laughs> Tasty. You know? It's chicken, chicken period spread. It's chicken sauce, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I usually enjoy it on sandwiches. Yeah. But I, I tend not to add it to anything else. Or I like to add it like a layer of mayo before the butter on grilled cheese. I, I just did that about a, about a week ago. Now, I've been aware of that for, you know, a few years now. Mm -hmm. But I had never done it because I, I don't really make grilled cheese like that. But I was like, you know what, let me try this out. And it comes out great. You get a very nice golden crust. Yeah. It's tasty, if, man. If you do the mayo on both sides of the bread. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just turn it into a food podcast. <laughs> I like it. I've always wanted a cooking show. Got to get Jim Gaffigan in here, man. Yeah. Is he, is he a cooker? Is he, a, is he like I a don't cook? know if he cooks, but he's always talking about food. Oh, that's true. His whole, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's all of his comedy is just riffing about on. Hot yeah. pockets. Hot all pockets. that shit. Yeah. Do you hope as a comedian one day to have like a Hot Pockets or like Burt's Machine, like a uh, one that you always got to tell at every gig? Hmm. You know, I had one on my own level earlier on in my career, which is funny. That's how I look at a lot of stuff in comedy, in life period, but definitely in comedy where it's like, you know, you have your level of, of, like things or situations and it might not be like uh, Bert's machine story right. but even in school before I even started stand up like somebody might ask me to tell a story Yeah. so in short when I started comedy I would do this bit about uh, I started relatively young so all I knew was about the couple things I had just done mm -hmm. and I was a lifeguard and I would talk about swimming and uh, being on the swim team in high school and being a lifeguard and so on and so forth and I didn't know that I was building a chunk, mm -hmm. the, as we'd call it now. It was just, these were the jokes I had, but they yeah. all kind of connected. Cause that's really all I had done. I mean, I'm 18, I just got out of high school. All yeah. I did was high school in this summer job. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I would tell that story or I do that chunk of uh, swim material as I guess I'd call it now. And that, that got my name around before my actual name got around. It's like, man, it's this new guy. He got this swim joke, man. You got to mm -hmm. hear it. People was booking me based off that joke. Wow. Yeah. Now, of course, this is what? We're talking 2010, 11, 12. Okay. So very early on. Back in Detroit? Yeah. And so when I say I got booked, I mean, I just, I just was blessed enough to have my face on a flyer. That was what getting booked was back then. Yeah. It wasn't getting paid. It was like, oh, shit, yeah. you on the flyer? Yeah. You booked. It's not a mic. It's right. a show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got a show tonight. Right. And it's not like if you don't bring 10 people, you can't go up. No, we didn't do uh There was not. I didn't become aware of bringer shows until. I take that back. I was aware of bringer shows then in Detroit, but I didn't do them. Yeah. Because it was just like, if I'm going to bring 10 people, I might as well just do my own show. Right. Because, and you know, at the different clubs, they had that set up like, mm -hmm. oh, you want to do your own show? You just bring people here. I'm like, I'm not about to bring 10 people here for you and I can right. keep the money myself or like, that's ridiculous. But now, you know, hey, bring your shows. They serve their purpose. I'm yeah. not going to shit on them. But it's a it's a good middle ground between mics and your first shows. If you if your friends and family want to come see you do your comedy and not go to a mic. Yeah. Yeah. There's a purpose. Yeah. I'm trying to remember now, like one of my first sets. I don't, I don't think I was instructed to bring people, but I did bring people. 
man, it's such a weird time. I, I, like when I think about my first few times on stage, it was kind of like a blackout experience, you know? Mm -hmm. Like you said, you started what, four years ago? Yeah. As an adult, I would imagine. And it's like, yeah. well, you know, I was I grown, you know, you, you, Hey brother, you could be 21 for all I know. What <laughs> yeah, do I know? That's right. But you know, I started at 18 mm -hmm. and you know, it's like, that's such a interesting time in life. Yeah. And like, when I look back on it, it's like, man, I just, and how many people are still at, at 30 are still doing what they were into as a child at, at 18. Yeah. And I was writing jokes at 17. Wow. I just hadn't got on stage till 18. Because of the clubs wouldn't let you in yet? No, I really, I just hadn't done it yet. Like it hadn't, comedy wasn't a, it wasn't as accessible as it is now. Mm -hmm. And which is so funny because this, this wasn't that long ago. Right. You know, we're talking, like I said, two th I graduated high school 2009, the summer of 2009. I was like, man, I want to do stand up. And then 2010 comes around and I finally found it, but there was no, Instagram, there was no true. YouTube videos of this stuff. Like I had Netflix back then and I would, it's before Netflix streaming. Like yeah. Maybe it existed, but DVDs. I definitely didn't have it. Yeah. And I would, in my Netflix queue, I just had like when they were kings and it was like when Steve Harvey and, and Jerry Seinfeld and Dave Chappelle were all like young kids yeah. doing stuff at like catch a rising star so there were dvds of that that's how i found out like oh okay this is what you gotta do you gotta go to this club you gotta do that then i had to find a club in my city i remember i had this phone it was the uh instinct which was like one of the first responses to the iphone it was one of the first touch screen phones. oh right yeah. yeah it was an instinct so i went to the gps and i just typed in comedy and a bunch of like comedians phone numbers came up and I called all of them like, hey, are y'all a club? They're like, I'm not a club, you ass. You called me to book me like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know. I just, and I kept calling and then I found a club. Yeah. And then I was, I was like, uh, how do you get on stage? Just like, do you want to do the open mic? Yes, that. Right, I'll have that please. Yeah, and then it was like, well, next month, I'm like, all right, I guess next month. Yeah. So let's say my date was January 30th of 2010. Mm -hmm. Before that, now I'm going. I'm in college for theater arts because I saw Dave Chappelle say, "If you want to get good at comedy, you got to go to school for theater arts." Okay. So that's why I went to college. At my college, there's a comedian just randomly shows up on campus, and uh, you know he's telling his jokes, and I'm sitting there with my buddy, and you know we're laughing or whatever, and then the comedian's like, "Hey, what's what's, what's so funny, you guys?" And my buddy's like. He, he, he's funny. He got a joke he want to tell you, which was just not true. Oh, no. He just made it up. He just got set up. Yeah, and the comedian was like, oh, you, you got a joke you want to tell? I'm like, no, I'm fine. He's like, hey, you guys, you, you want to hear him tell a joke? Oh, he gets the whole crowd behind him. Whole crowd's in there. Yeah. I go on stage and pretty much just black out. Yeah. Cause I don't know what I talked about. Like Apparently, I talked about jacking off on the toilet and sneezing and coming in my own face. <laughs> just... <laughs> Horrible stuff. First time you, stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't know if anybody laughed or not, but I remember getting off stage and it was like, well, I did it. Now, this is before the date that I had booked. So I, my, so you got one out of the way. Right. Yeah. So the first time I went up there, you know, I remembered that one a little bit more, but I don't know why I just went down that tangent, but it's a very weird life that we have, you know, to be it an is. adult and I'm still doing kid stuff. Yeah. And it's not like I'm, Michael Jackson here like it's not like I've been getting paid for it like I'm well I'm in the same place as people who started two years ago uh but you have accomplished something that not a lot of people have in this life and you're you're a paid regular oh yeah after yeah. becoming after being a door guy that is true you got your name on the wall that is true that is true so <laughs> I'm, I mean there's people that have been doing comedy for 35 years that still aspire to get their name on that wall yeah, you know, and that's one of those things I think where like, I didn't know how big of a deal it was, which is probably what allowed me to have the mental clarity and freedom to uh, accomplish such a feat. You know, like when I moved out here uh, from Detroit in 2015, I believe, I didn't even know that the, what the comedy store was. Like, I didn't know 
well, no, I had visited out here before then. I think it was like earlier 2015. But when I moved up, before I moved out here, I didn't, like my buddy Trey is the one who told me about the comedy store. He was like, yeah, man, the comedy store. And like many other people, I was like, what, they like sell comic books or something? It's <laughs> like, no, man, it's a comedy club. Whatever. I get here, you know, my friends, they're working there. I'm going to the Madhouse and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then some of the guys that was working at the Madhouse came down from San Diego. And then they started working at the comedy store. And they was like, hey, man, you want a job? I was like, no. I didn't move here to get no fucking job. That's why I live in a van. So I don't have to <laughs> work. And it's like, no, man, you want to take the job? Now, I didn't even know that being passed was a thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand that until I started working there. Right. I was already hosting a show at the comedy store. It was Crack 'em Up, which mm -hmm. is the black show there. Mm -hmm. And the black show pretty much got nut there, at least at the time, had nothing to do with, you know, the rest of the goings on of the comedy store. It was like, an independent show. Yeah, independent I had produce. been hosting a show there for like half a year. And then now I'm working at the store and all these people are like, oh, man, you're so funny. Where have you been? I'm like, I host a fucking show here. What yeah. are you but they don't come up there for black, at least back then. Mm -hmm. They didn't come up there for black night. Mm -hmm. But anyway, started. So working. when they ask you to work there, you're like, bitch, I already work here. No, it was more so like I'm a com I'm a comedian. I don't I'm not about to fucking be no door guy. I'm not about to grovel and fucking park motherfuckers cars and stuff. Like, right. I didn't been on TV already. Mm -hmm. You know, this is me trying to big myself up. But uh, I was like, hey, you know, whatever. Ain't like I'm doing nothing else. But somebody broke it down. Was like, hey, you get a lot of opportunities if you work here. And it's it was to broken do. down lightly, but I still hadn't comprehended it. Mm -hmm. You know, I to tell you the truth, I didn't really comprehend it until maybe I got past. Because by the time I started working there, I was like, oh, we get free drinks and shit? Hey, man, this this my kind of place. You should have said that in the first yeah, place. Yeah, <laughs> man, I started drinking and having fun and, you know, having too much fun. But we can get into that later. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, and then I went to uh, Just for Laughs. And the guy who was booking uh, the store at the time, Adam Egot. I remember he saw me out there. He was like, what the fuck? What are you doing out here? Like, you just started working at the store. It's like, well, I, I've been doing black comedy, f f like for as long as I've been doing this. Yeah, like I had gotten sent out to Just for Laughs for some Kevin Hart stuff. Mm -hmm. This is before I ever did New Faces. Normally, your first time doing yeah. Just for Laughs is New Faces. Right, I'm out there and doing shows. Yeah. yeah, like doing other shit. Right. So you know, it was I've got a pretty interesting introduction to comedy as a whole. And did that change Adam's mind about putting you up? Did you come back home and he was like, oh, you're going up? Or no, I don't think so. I think maybe he just thought like, you know, I really don't know. But I think he just was like, oh, this guy is, I'm not the guy that is going to, it's not up to me to get him over. He's going to get something some way, somehow. Yeah. It's not just up to me. It's not like if I never pass this guy, he'll never be anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's waiting for the store to ingratiate him in right. the world of comedy. You're going to go out and make your comedy career whether right. the store recognizes your talent or not. Right. Now, yeah. funny enough, I've got so many people that think that, that nobody has done shit you know what you know that's it's all on me but like yeah. when everybody thinks like oh that guy's gonna be all right yeah like oh uh, i'm fucking poor homeless <laughs> i could like somebody take me on the road i've never been taken on the road by much of anybody really for more than one date wow uh shout out to our shafir he took me out yeah you did his podcast right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. which that's a whole nother story i didn't know that it was a what the podcast was about he kept asking me questions about my van i didn't know that his podcast was themed on things i'm like yeah fuck yeah. this van <laughs> what a anyway <laughs> uh yeah i did uh ari shafir he took me out and uh neil brennan he'll he'll uh hit me up from time to time that's about it man yeah yeah but i think you know between me fucking off and doing things poorly and just people thinking I'm gonna be all right. It's like, hey, I'd love to, uh, Bert Kreischer hit hit, right. hit your buddy up, yeah. man. I'd love to go out with you. You got 30 comics out yeah, on this man, baseball like, tour. Can you make it 31? Joe Rogan, yeah. hit me up, brother. Yeah. I, you know, uh, fucking Ian Edwards, Owen Smith. I, hey, man, I ain't doing shit, but people think I'm doing stuff. Yeah. Well, they all watch this show. 
So they're going to see that and they're going to be like, God damn it. Hey, man. Let's get Ron out there. Look, I'm about, I'm about to undercut somebody right now. Whatever you pay in your feature <laughs> oh, now. don't do that. <laughs> I'll take double. Yeah, man. Yeah. Shit. But no, it's uh, it, it was wonderful getting in at the store, and, it, and that was an accomplishment, and uh, very grateful for that. You know, sometimes when I feel like I got nothing to stand on, mm -hmm. I got that much to stand on. It's like, man, I ain't did shit. It's like, well, you did. If you stopped, if I stopped doing comedy right now, mm -hmm. my name was even if they paint over it, my name was on that wall. That's right. Which means something to a lot of people. There's a very limited number of people that are on that wall. Yeah. Compared to the people that have tried. Yeah. To get their name on that wall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You are my fourth guest that's been passed at the store. Really? Who else? Yeah, uh, Ryan Sickler just recently got passed, but he's been doing comedy forever. Right, right, right. Steve Fury was on uh, earlier this week, but to the viewers at home, it'll feel like two, three weeks ago. Uh, and then Frank Castillo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I got passed, I think, before those guys, and uh, nobody really gave me shit about it, but I didn't know that like at least at the time like to be passed as a door guy you had to be there for like two years mm. and apparently i had got passed before two years and uh did it cause a big kerfuffle no because i wasn't a jerk off and you people could tell some some people who still work there <laughs> that's not the shit i'm just saying they yeah, still work you. there would say that uh I was a bad door guy which is just not true i just didn't take that job too seriously sure i'm like hey listen we tell people where to sit we listen to comedy we do comedy and we drink alcohol this is not we don't work for the cia right, it's not rocket surgery yeah i'm not yeah. i'm not trying to suck dick here i'm not trying to kiss up to anybody i'm not trying to act like i'm bigger than i am or smaller than i am i'm here i do my job i have fun i love everybody so nobody ever really gave me any shit but you know late and this is not to toot my own horn or anything but you know people be like man you know I would if you weren't as funny as you are I would really say this is unfair but it's like <laughs> clearly you were you know good enough to be passing I'm like hey yeah. brother I didn't know I yeah. I didn't even know so you do your uh the, your sets to get past mm -hmm. and part of this is because I was still living in a van too like when you I'll be thinking about other stuff like I ain't thinking about I'm trying to find somewhere shaded to park. Right. Not really thinking about like, oh, I gotta, today is the, fuck all that. I, where's my good shaded parking <laughs> yeah. spot at, you know? Right. So the day we were doing our sets to get past, I don't even think I knew that that's what was happening. Right, it's just a Tuesday to you. The door, yeah. it was a Monday. The door guys get three minutes mm -hmm. every Monday. I'm just doing my Monday three minute spot. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, oh, could somebody cover me? I go in, I do my thing, I leave few days later like your past i'm like when i when was the test i didn't even know you know <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah no every, all the guys and girls they're great you know yeah the store is a special spot it is it is and i'm i'm lucky and fortunate to be a part of that you know i is the one club that i won't photograph oh really yeah why is that uh when i started f uh doing photography for comedians mm -hmm. Um, there was a gentleman that named Troy Conrad's that was already shooting yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Troy went out with Fluffy, pandemic hit. A couple other people, Liz, Pamela, Van, they all started doing mm. their thing there. And uh, I'm keeping the store just for comedy. That makes sense. Yeah. To have, you know, some type of barrier with any place. That yeah. makes sense. I respect yeah. that building so much. Not that I don't disrespect the Laugh Factory and the Improv, which is where I predominantly shoot, but that's just you know i'm treating that with the reverence that i think it deserves and yeah. i know that people that shoot there like van is dedicated to shooting pictures there and he loves yeah. his job and he's very good at it and i don't i don't want to fuck with any of that i just want to only be known as a comic at the comedy store no that's good man that's good that's great and you know i need to get out to the other clubs myself man you know the uh let's uh, like i said i had a lot of fun at the store right uh back in detroit i didn't drink that much mm -hmm. When I moved here, I didn't really drink that much. Now, when I look back on it, it was partly because I probably couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, or, or I'd drink beer. You know, yeah. A can of beer is $2, you know, mm -hmm. especially the tall boys, $2, $3. Yep. You drink two, three of those, you don't really have room to drink more no. of anything else. So I didn't really start drinking hard liquor until I, start, until I started working at the store. Then I turned up, right? Mm -hmm. Started drinking a lot. Long story short, that 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 lifestyle in 2019 uh, uh, had me doing 30 days in jail. Who? Yeah, 
Yeah, which that's a whole story in itself, which yeah. I, I won't bore you with. But December 2019, I'm, I spent that whole month in jail. Merry Christmas and New Year's. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I did work the kitchen. So I was able to get like the Christmas ham and, you know, stuff like that. And I would give gravy to, you know, the other guys and stuff like that. One of the uh, officers in there pulled me to the side. Like it's one of my, like my first couple of days in there. Mr. Taylor, can you come to the side? I'm like, what the fuck? I just got here. How am I in trouble? I don't even understand this. <laughs> yeah. I get to the side. It's like, hey, you remember me? We started comedy together. What? I'm like, man, get the fuck out of here, <laughs> man. I ain't trying to hear that. I'm in jail. Yeah. He's like, no, I saw you got like a thing coming out with Bill Burr. I've just been telling all the officers. I'm like, it's thanks, I guess, because I had shot something and it hadn't came out yet, but they were running promotions for it. Yeah. This all while I'm in jail, man. Right. You know. Oh, no. so it was just a So you can't be out there doing podcasts and promoting and all that shit. You know, but hey, it, I put myself in that situation, so there it was. But I get out, right? And uh so now it's January twenty twenty. I get out January first, uh New Year's Day. And uh I'm like, Yeah, this is gonna be my year. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, was I wrong, man. Right? Yeah. So since then, man, since December 2019, I have just been going through a, a whirlwind of trying to uh, get my footing, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I probably should have did it throughout the middle of the pandemic. But, you know, some other things, it was, I had some other people in my life and, you know, trying to help different people when I hadn't even helped myself. Yeah. And the weirdest thing about the pandemic is, a lot of people did nothing, but they didn't feel bad about doing nothing because everybody knew that they wasn't missing out on nothing. Yeah. You can't go out, mm -hmm. you, you, but there's also nothing to do because everywhere is closed. Like, right. man, I should be going to the gym. Well, it's closed. Right. And it's not like anybody else is working out. So you not, there's no FOMO. There's We're no all fear. We're getting fat together. There was no fear of missing out. So I fucked up all that time, mm -hmm. right? And then, you know, the world opened back up, back up, yada, yada, yada. But I say all that to say I should really be hitting the improv and the laugh factory and different things like that. But I'm trying to get some things together, you know, but I, I want to get back out there. You know, like they'll hit like anytime I show up, they're like, what the fuck, man? You want to do a show? And I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, out of sight. out of." I'll be waiting for people to call me sometimes. Yeah. It's like, do you know how many comedians there are? Ain't nobody thinking about you. You ain't on TV. You ain't doing no podcast. You just at the house thinking somebody like, you know what? I should call this rando. Right. No, nobody's calling me. So I need to get back out there. I felt that way when I first started. I was like, well, I did an open mic. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I did one. Yeah. Why aren't they? I want to do a show. I started talking to the, some of the promoters that were doing shows at the Improv. I'm like, can I get a spot? They're like, bitch, you're the photographer. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, but I'm funny too. They're like, tell me a joke. I'm like, I have one really? right now. Oh, I've ne Even when I first started, I didn't go with that shit. Tell me a joke. Get the fuck out of my face. Tell yeah. me a joke. <laughs> if I tell you I do porn, you want me to suck your dick right now? Get out of here. <laughs> I'm a firefighter. Now you start a fire and be like, <laughs> right. oh, really? Let me see. Yeah, yeah well, go burn that Walmart down and see how well you can put it out. <laughs> Um, just to backtrack a little bit, that Bill Burr thing that you just mentioned was Bill Burr presents The Ringers. And that had yep. a couple other folks on it, like uh, Josh Adam Myers, I think, was on that. Uh, yep, Punky Johnson, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Eleanor Kerrigan. You know, if I'm not special for nothing, I'm special for, there's a lot of things I've done, right? And when I look back, or if anybody was to look back on all of the, uh, you know, a lot of the things that I've done, you can pick from everybody in there. All of them, like, have done and are at, like, good heights now. Mm -hmm. And I'm special in the sense of I'm the only one who really hasn't moved <laughs> from much of any of that. Well, that just like, means opportunities around the corner. You know, I like to think that. And this is not me shitting on myself. This is It's just kind of funny to me. Like, I, when I went to... Montreal the second time for uh, new faces. Mm -hmm. When I look at my class of new faces, they're all making hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're all, yeah. I'm the, the only one who virtually is in the same place that I was. Hell, I might be a few pegs under, but it's the same with yeah. the Bill Burr thing. Mm -hmm. It's the same with a lot. I've been on some things and like I did this show, I wrote on it, I starred in it. 
it was on a free form, I think. It was called uh, WTF Baron Davis. Yeah, 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody in there. He's on some big show. Baron Davis is still Baron Davis, you know, obviously. Everybody else is doing... I'm just... Are you the cooler? Do you know what a cooler is? No, what's that? When you're in Vegas and you're on a hot table. Could be blackjack, could be craps, could be anything. Yeah. If the if the if everybody's winning, uh huh. the casinos hire like people that lose all the time. Oh, I've heard of that. And they're like, get in there, man. They're winning. And then that guy with their... They try their best, but their luck's such shit that yeah. they cool the table off. I don't think I'm that because... Everywhere I'm at, everybody else blows up. So I'm the opposite yeah. of a cooler. Yeah. It's just that yeah. I have yet to blow up from the stuff. Right. So like I show up, people take off. And then I go back and slink in my van or, you know, <laughs> do whatever. But I know that it, it's been a... Uh, I was talking to somebody recently. And if the last two, three years didn't teach me anything, it let me know that, like... You know, I, I I consider myself a smart guy, whatever that means. And uh, when you're a smart guy, when you're a smart person, I really like to say when you're a thinker, because mm -hmm. smart has its own connotations. But when you're when you think a lot, mm -hmm. uh, you you can justify to yourself a lot of bullshit. Yeah. And you know, I think a lot, so there's a lot of answers that I do have because I, I think about things oftentimes. But the last two, three years showed me that there was so much I didn't know that if I would have gotten anything I thought I wanted mm -hmm. at the time before I learned all these lessons, I would have destroyed myself. Oh, yeah. I would have destroyed my, like I've done a few things where I was like, oh, so I just make $400,000 a year now? And it was like, yep, that's what happened. Overnight. And for reasons that had nothing to do with me, they didn't happen, mm -hmm. right? But now I look back and, and go, oh, my, I would have died. Yeah. I would have I killed somebody. I would have fucking destroyed something. Like, yep. would, I would have. Wouldn't have any of that money left. I, maybe I would have, but yeah. I probably wouldn't be here to spend it. Yes, but true. I didn't even know that until I knew that. Yeah. Now I'm in a better place. It's like, oh, okay. Like, you can't help everybody. Mm -mm. It's not my job to. Like, I was straight up moving people from Detroit here like oh because you thought that they their comedy would suit well here some people didn't even want to do comedy it was just like you want to do what you want to produce just go move out to la it's like i can't just move out to la i need a ticket i need somewhere to stay i'll buy the ticket you can stay with me i don't give a fuck i'm right. I'm, I'm doing that mm. i've called them family members like what come out here I that's not my job nope no i came from a good place but even you know good intentions you got to know you got to learn like Man, you, you you give yourself away and neglect yourself, you'll, you'll fuck yourself up. That's right. Learn that the hard way. Yeah. So now I know. We had a similar opportunity. I moved out here with my band in 06 from North yeah. Carolina, and we had some opportunities with some record labels, and uh, that was all I ever wanted. I just mm. wanted to get that record deal, and I wanted to get out there, and I wanted to tour around the country and play music for everybody, and that just didn't happen for us, and we ended up getting jobs in the film business. Mm. Um, and I look back, and it was like, our music at best was bad. Like on its best day, it was, it was really bad music. If we had gotten like a single on the radio, it might have been a year and a half, 18 months, 24 months tour cycle, and the label would have dropped us. But in our heads, we would have been rock stars. We would have never learned how to PA on film sets and sweep the floors and work our way up. Yeah. And the best thing that ever happened to us was not getting what we wanted at the time. Yeah, 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 man. And now I'm at like, I'm at a place now where for a multitude of reasons that I won't even, like I said, bore you with, uh, I found out that, so I, I did a lot of things running off of youthful energy, mm -hmm. ignorance, and well, that's it. Youthful energy and ignorance. That'll get you some places. Yeah. But I mean, but I mean like not sleeping or drinking, uh, fucking, mountains of red bull and stuff and you know even just the way my brain worked and my excitement and my uh i'll just stick with excitement mm -hmm. i didn't know that what i was pulling from wasn't infinite until it ran out yeah and now i'm tr now that's what i'm dealing with it's like okay this this energy that I, that i'm using like it's not infinite but i I found it out when it was like I was depleted. 
Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, if I'm tired, well, I'll just drink Red Bull. At some point, that just won't work. Right. At some point, your heart just going to be racing, (laughs) and you're going to get high blood pressure, and you're going to fucking, like, something's not going to. Like, I wake up sometimes now, it's like, I don't have any energy, and I don't think there's anything I can do about it. Mm. It used to be, like, I've got all the energy in the world, so I'm going to fuck off things that I should be doing. Right. Now it's like, okay, I only want to do the things I should be doing. And I'm fighting for the energy. But, you know, all of it is, I think, a, a, a learning process. So, Yeah. When you know better, you do better. Yeah, man. I read that somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I got a couple pre, pre, pre-planned questions. I'm Go having a it. stroke for some reason. Uh, I could guess, but I'd love to hear your take on who your biggest influences are. You give me three of what your guesses are. Because I know all of them. I mean, it's a lot of people, but the main ones I can rattle off in no time. I think that you have a maturity to your comedy that uh, is beyond your years. And I think, well, that also comes from starting at an early age. But um, Thank you, by the way. It's just well-crafted. I watched your Don't Tell special before you came. and Oh, man. There's, there's a backstory to that that I've never been able to tell, but I won't forget it. The... Uh, just the way that the jokes flow together and the quality of the jokes and the hard right and hard left turns that you don't see coming. I just think for, you said you're 30 years old. Mm-hmm. I don't wow. know. I don't know another 30 year old that can write at that level. And the it's funny. the oh, subtle performance lot. elements that you have, like showing the crowd when to laugh because you're laughing. Telling these motherfuckers that you're not, I'm not scared of y'all motherfuckers. Like, <laughs> well, yeah. there you go. That's a hint to one yeah. of the influences right there. Man. Right. That would be my first choice. Yeah, so there's Bernie Mac in no particular order. Bernie Mac, Patrice O'Neill, Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, Louis C.K., Paul Mooney, Richard Pryor. Those are the main ones. Yeah. Those are the main ones. And I've taken I've taken things from all of those people. And before stand up, I was uh I should stop saying I was, but I was studying to be an engineer. Mm-hmm. So when I was in high school, I did robotics and things like that throughout all four years of high school. I was on the robotics team, built robots and took, you know, advanced mathematics and stuff like that. Was learning how to program and different things using CAD and C++ at the time. Of course, all of that technology is beyond what I could deal with right now. Mm-hmm. But at the time, that's what I did. Yeah. Uh, I liked tinkering with things, making things, and so on and so forth. So when I went into comedy, I had the same uh, sensibility, or you know, I would use this. So like, I would look at jokes like that, like it was a science, right? You know, so when the laugh, and not, not even for me when the laugh, but when the when the crowd should laugh, and and why they're laughing. Like a lot of people do comedy, and I don't know if they've even ever taken the time to figure out like what is what is like la- why does laughter happen right what is a joke what makes something funny mm-hmm. and so i've thought about those different things i'm not saying that my answer is the answer but w- one of the things i've come to is when there's a juxtaposition of what you feel versus what you know that produces laughter right even down to like getting tickled like mm-hmm. you laugh when, why do we laugh when we're tickled? And why do we laugh when we hear something, what we call funny? Because it's a juxtaposition of what you know versus what you feel. When you're getting tickled, you feel, your body feels like it's being attacked. Mm-hmm. But you know that you're in no harm. You feel something, you know something, laughter's in the middle. Mm-hmm. So I break different things down like that. So I can talk about, uh, I, I, I feel as if I can talk about whatever I want. And I know how to insert the laughter in there because I know what creates laughter. Right. So you're using science. Yeah. Or a method. Yeah. You're using a scientific method to create an involuntary laugh response. At least that's how I go about it. I yeah. think your karate bit is a perfect example of that. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. I'm well, not going to burn it. Just hey, go. No, it's all, I, you know, it's all good. I, 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 I appreciate it, you know, but I, I'll say this much. I know that there are a ton of people. It's people that don't even do stand up, people in my fam- family that are way funnier than me. But there's a difference between funny and good. Mm-hmm. Like I heard Chris Rock say it about, uh, uh, I used to listen to a lot of Opie and Anthony, old Opie and Anthony, because uh, obviously I wasn't around when they were on the radio. But anyway, and Chris Rock was talking about 
uh, Tracy Morgan. Mm-hmm. He was like, who's funnier than Tracy Morgan? Nobody. He said, I just pick better jokes than Tracy Morgan. That's the difference between right. good and funny. Yeah, Funny is just, fu- like when you're funny, it's just funny, man. Like I'm not the funniest guy at the store. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I, it could be argued that I'm in the running for one of the better people at the store, but there's a lot of funny people at the store. There's a lot of funny people. But when you break down what stand-up is, because like there's people who have never done stand-up before can get on stage somewhere and fucking kill. Mm-hmm. That's not the job, though. The job is, can you manufacture that level of, you know, funny on command Right. when you don't feel like it, when the crowd isn't hot, when you're tired, when you just, when your toe hurt, that's the job. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the second half of that job is turning that into business and money for the club. Now, that is... That's that's when you get your Joe Rogans and your mm-hmm. fucking you know Andrew Schultz and stuff like that. And yeah, then, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, that that can be pretty hard because you can you can find yourself fortunate. Like, I'll I'll say a Richard Pryor was fortunate. Mm-hmm. He was good. He was funny. He was good, and he was at the right places at the right time. Because you, you, one could say that. The way he lived his life was relatively destructive, mm-hmm. and, but he found himself in the right places, and you know he was able to do what he does. Then you have people who might not be that talented, but they can manufacture, you know, getting their career where they want it to be. And then you got everything in the middle. I might be somewhere in the middle, where I live a relative. I have lived a relatively destructive life, mm-hmm. and it's like okay, I kind of know how to put myself in the right positions, but it's time for me to. It's up to me to get myself all the way there one would say um that you've already created enormous opportunity for yourself fresh faces and then jfl before fresh faces and being passed at the comedy store are things that some comics go their whole lives without but also can get on the road and do road gigs and eke out a living so i think the impression that i'm getting and you know ron and i are just new friends we just met today but you're terribly hard on yourself and i think uh, I'm very hard on myself too. That's why one of the reasons why I can recognize it. But mm-hmm. I think it's healthy every once in a while to, you know, not sleep on what you've done, but can, you know, reward yourself and be proud of the accomplishments that you've done. Yeah, no, I'm proud. I'm proud of myself and I'm more so thankful to the good Lord for, you know, putting me in those situations, but I'm aware of what I'm not doing and what I'm, you know, fighting to uh, overcome and deal with, if you will, is how to uh, go about attacking those things. I always use this analogy, like there's nobody who's not in the best shape of their life that doesn't know how to get in the best shape of your life. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. It's not easy, but it's very simple. You eat right, you work out. Now there's a bunch of things to eat and there's a bunch of different workouts, but we all know what to do. Eat right, work out. It ain't rocket science. Mm -hmm. Yet we got a bunch of people who not in shape. Most of us. Exactly. Or at the very least, who not in the best shape of, that we could possibly be in. Mm-hmm. It's the same with like, you know, careers, or at least for me in my career, it's like, oh, I'm aware of what to do. And it's not, it's not difficult or it's not, you know, complex. It's pretty simple, mm-hmm. but it ain't necessarily, <laughs> it's not the easiest thing. Right. You know, it's like, yeah. why don't you just do a hundred setups every day? It's like, <laughs> no, I hear you. Right. But man, there's. If it was easy, everybody would do it. And, you know, yeah. but. I'm working on it. I, I'm excited to be where I'm at now and like just, you know, get past some of the different uh, hangups that I've had mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. But yeah, no, I, I, I can understand how I could seem like I'm hard on myself. I'm just, you know, I'm aware. We'll put it that way. All right. Yeah. Well, awareness is the first step. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. I've been through that too. You go to jail for drinking, you become aware of all 12 steps. That's right. Yeah. 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 Um, I shared this story earlier, but earlier you mentioned um, Eleanor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just want to tell you, the first time I decided to start going to uh, the Ha Ha in, mm-hmm. in the uh, Valley, yeah. she was the first comic that I saw and then saw again. And I told this story recently, but the first time I saw her, she did great. It was very funny. And then mm-hmm. maybe two nights later, I saw her again, and she did the same jokes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Oh, what? That's funny. They just write these yeah. 10, 15 minutes and they just tell it all over the place. That's funny. I thought until that point, and I think I was 37 years old, 
I, I that's was like, really funny. About I that. thought people got up there and they just said shit off the top of their head, and that's what made a funny person. Yeah, and yeah. it blew my mind, man. It's funny to find that out as an adult, man. Which is why I think, for me, as you know, being in this thing, it's so interesting because I found out a lot of things about, you know, entertainment as a whole as like a younger person which is normally when you find out new things you know mm -hmm. as you become an adult but i found them out like at the age where like i also would find out things about my you know th just things period like you're 18 you just learn more things yeah but that's because i was in this business like you said you could be if you just not into comedy you'd be 37 and be like what the fuck? <laughs> They wrote that? Right. Yeah. I found it out then, but it was, it was, you know, equally as shocking to me. It was like, wait a minute. Like, I didn't know you were supposed to write jokes. I thought yeah. like, cause all I'm watching is Comic View and uh, uh, what's that show called? Uh, Deaf Comedy Jam yeah. and, you know, some of the Comedy Central stuff. And they just go up. I don't see no paper. Right. I don't see them at open mics. I didn't know open mic was a thing. Mm -mm. I, I, I thought that people who did stand up were all actors. Right. I didn't know stand up comedy was a thing. I thought it was like, I'm a funny person. And like you, you know, like Will Smith would be, if I saw Will Smith on comic view, I'd be like, of course, yeah, that's what that's famous. People get to be up there and be fun. That's not how it goes. But it, with a few exceptions in Hollywood right now. Well, we won't, like name, I said, we won't name any names. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like I said, hey, but you know, get your money, man. That's my thing. Like, yeah, especially now in in black comedy, uh, really comedy period, but definitely in black comedy. Like, there's so much internet comedy, internet comedians, because that is ultimately what sells tickets mm -hmm. is fame. Like, there's two, there's essentially two different ways to go at comedy. People come to see you or you go to the people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us are working to get to a point where the people come to see you. People will go see Barack Obama do stand up because he, he's famous. Mm -hmm. That's what it, that's how it goes. But it used to be more of a balance. I'm not gonna say it was absolutely balanced, but it was more of a balance between people who are good at the job and then people who go in to see the people. Yeah. So it's like, you know, uh, like at a random club in Kansas, people would go. We go into the club. We're going to the club. And the club hires a person that can do the job. Right. Versus now. Who's playing? Most clubs, yeah. it's like, I want to see that famous person that got that viral video. Mm -hmm. And I can't blame them for not getting that money. But I do think it's creating a market somewhere where like people are hungry for people who the craft is their thing. Yeah. It's like, I love seeing famous people. But I want to see, like, people are surprised, like, when they go see a good comedy show, like, what the, f that was funny. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's how it should be. Supposed to go that way. Like, oh, we went to go see uh, Chicken Shack Mac the other day. And mm -hmm. it was like, it was okay. It's like, because Chicken Shack Mac didn't get into this for stand up. Yeah. He just had a, a video at the Chicken Shack. <laughs> and we're like, I'm Chicken Shack Mac. Right. And then it went viral. So you want to go see the viral right. Chicken Shack Mac man. And every time he bombs, he's like, I'm Chicken Shack Mac. Right. And everyone's right. like, ah, right. people right. fall out of their fucking chairs. And then they go see somebody they never heard of. And they're like, yo, I, I almost died. Like I had to leave. I've, had to, I've been to shows where I was like, I was laughing so hard. I had to leave. It's like, mm -hmm. I can't breathe. Like, I yeah. People want that. They just don't know that it exists. Yeah. And people are spoiled in L.A. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because you can go pay $20 on a Wednesday and see 15 people in a row that are all headliners or above. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Especially like before the pandemic at the store. It was on fire. The building was on fire. You see, now these just the people on the lineup. On the lineup, you got Joey Diaz, uh, Joe Rogan, Burt Kreischer, uh, Tom, Segura. Uh, Tom Segura, Bobby Lee, Anthony Jeselnik, Donnell Eliza Rollins. Schlesinger, Donnell Rollins. Uh, what's her real name? Because I know her, her fake name, which I won't burn on the internet. But uh, what is that lady's name? The Asian lady with the babies. Oh, she did both of her specials when she was pregnant. Yeah. Ali Wong. Ali Wong. Mm -hmm. She she's got some 
she had some issues, so we we try not to put her information out there that okay. much. But you know, you got these people on the lineup every night. By the way, Chris Rock is popping in. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Hart is popping in, and Dave Chappelle is going to close out with three hours <laughs> and smoke cigarettes. All and time. you pay fifteen bucks, right? You know, thirty five if you want a booth, right? right. They're very <laughs> spoiled here. Yeah. I was talking to a buddy of mine not too long ago. I was like, man, you know, when I started, I got a lot more stand innovations. I don't know, maybe something changed in my comedy, and sure, something did. But then I was like, oh yeah, I moved out here. Ain't nobody standing up for you. Fuck you. Why am I standing? <laughs> right. I'm somebody too. Everybody here has a headshot. Mm -hmm. Everybody here is here to do something. When I started standing up to places I would go in the Midwest, people would stand up. It was like, yo, this is phenomenal. Yeah. And I'm going to go back to work tomorrow. Those people clap when the plane lands too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here, nobody cares. No. But, you know, it, 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 it all serves its purpose. Well, um, not that you need my validation, but I think that you know, you're going to be very, very, very successful. I think you're one of the funniest guys working right now. Hey, man, I appreciate it, brother. I'm I really you. glad that Monterey hooked us up. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, just because I remembered and on the off chance that somebody hears this, I'm like, I wanted to hear that backstory. So that don't tell set, right? Okay. Quick backstory on that. Oftentimes, some of the best sets that we have recorded are ones we don't know are being recorded. Okay. And I was uh, I was not feeling the best uh, that particular day. Uh, I think I might have had a stomach ache or something like that. Might have been tired. Who knows? And I knew they were recording, but I didn't really know what they were recording for. Mm -hmm. Like I, I was like, I think they're, I think they're just doing this like because some shows they'll go like we're recording for you to have the footage and i'm sure. like I don't, i'm not gonna do anything with the footage i don't give a fuck so i'm kind of thinking that this is that mm -hmm. and it completely was not that this was like a fucking production but i i wasn't thinking about that and i'm using all of my energy just to do the jokes and the you know to to do the job be happy so i'm up there and i'm very very more so than i normally am i'm very uh calculated it looked it came off as like a lot of good crowd control mm -hmm. but it really was like my own control like trying not to be up here and like ugh, and you know making all these silly faces and then it, it you know i had a pretty good set to when it came out people were like man this is good and i was looking at it like yeah that do look good but that's it's not good for the reason y'all it ain't just because i'm that good it's because <laughs> i was like really trying to hold it together yeah so i i thank those guys for doing that like a lot of people have hit me up about that set and you know i've, I've got a couple gigs from that so people of don't tell thank you for that Six hundred seventy-five thousand views hey man yeah I, I only got paid one time so the, the numbers don't mean too much well to yeah because they they uh they had to put it on their channel yeah i might have got about 50 bucks and two drink tickets but i appreciate them yeah um well that's a fantastic set everybody should go watch that set it's on the don't tell channel yeah, um it. your instagram is comedian ron t that is correct and do you have anything else to plug you got uh podcast website Flickr, anything no twitch man. no and that's it but that goes to show that's part of the thing like all but i you can, can't do all the things i don't do none of the things yeah. i don't do nothing but that's all changing so just check me out on instagram facebook youtube at comedian ron t i've got some great things coming down the pike you know i'm getting ready i'm going to the gym i'm wearing shorts now eating you know? right yeah i've been eating watermelon with seeds in it that's good for you. Apparently the good stuff. I know we're wrapping up, but I got to say this. So I'm looking up the health benefits of watermelon, right? All right. I find the song Watermelon Sugar. I'm like, I've heard this song a thousand times. I never knew who sang it. Mm -hmm. It turns out to be Harry Styles. I'm like, oh, that's the guy from Queen's Gambit. No, he's not the guy from Queen's <laughs> Gambit. He's the guy from One Direction. That's I've right. heard of One Direction, didn't know they were a current band. I start looking up all the One Direction... I missed out on a lot doing comedy. I mm -hmm. felt like I missed the whole saga of the Jackson Five. And I found out about One Direction, <laughs> the show they came on, all their individual success, the breakup, all of that just from looking up Watermelon. So eat right, you'll find out about <laughs> things you've missed out on. It's amazing what you can learn on the internet yeah, if you're just willing to learn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, we're gonna call this episode Watermelon Seeds. There it is, man. And hope that I don't get canceled for it. Right on. I'm with it. Uh, Ron Taylor. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming, man. I appreciate your time. Thank you, brother. Thank you for having me. And we'll see you guys next time on the Isaac Abrams Show. Yeah.